scripture alone, not with our own interpretation. Bless this night as we go forward. Bless the listeners that each and every one of them would understand the words of the Bible, Mother God, and would seek you diligently, Father, and seek your word and seek your truth, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, girls. Um, shut up. That's right. Amen. So we're doing um, how God is just and he's righteous. So I'm going to be doing how God is just and then Stephanie's going to pick it up with, with how he's righteous. So God bless you girls. Tonight me and Stephanie are doing God's attributes of just and righteousness. We believe God is love and kindness and good. So we must believe that he is also just and righteous. Throughout the Bible we see God's attributes always being displayed. What does justice mean? Justice is another word for righteousness. Morally right, very good, and excellent. All Stephanie and I are doing is explaining the two through scripture alone. God is holy and eternal and powerful. Therefore, he must be a God of justice and righteousness. An attribute is a personality trait. It's a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic part of someone. Let us read. Deuteronomy 32.4. The rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. For the glory of God, we clearly see this man... The, the, for the Lord God, we, we clearly see many of his attributes being displayed here. But what's so beautiful is when it says, for all his ways are justice, which is everything he does results in justice, which means there is no injustice in him. He can never be unjust for the glory of God. Second Chronicles 19.7 now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully. For with the Lord our God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. Very frequently when we see God's attribute of justice, we see the verses saying how he is a judge. And only, how only God is the one and only true and just judge. Showing no partiality, no bribery, and therefore no sin. There is no sin in God. He is holy, which means he is set apart, Amen. which means he is all holy. He is not just becoming holy, but he's established as in he's holy, and that's it. There's no comma. Like, there's no, there's no, at the end of that sentence, it's not, he's holy, he's becoming holy. No, he's holy. He's, he's, he's already, he's a standard of holy. He is holy. So there is no sin in him, so there is no injustice in him. God is a judge who is far more exceedingly just than those of the ones on earth who do accept bribes and show partiality. But the scriptures tell us God doesn't show favoritism. So a, a judge here on earth in a courtroom, if Bolivano, he um, felt bad for a criminal who deserved to go to jail, who deserved to go to prison, if he felt bad for him, below the Camila, he might say, fine, you don't deserve this. You know what? I feel bad for you. Go free. Or I know your father go free or any of the sort he shows favoritism or the person might say listen judge i'll give you five thousand dollars let me go free and the judge will say yeah go so but it's not like that with god god can be bought and he doesn't have favoritism so acts ten thirty four says then peter began to speak look what peter said i now realize how true it is that god does not show favoritism this verse is talking about how God bringing salvation to the Gentiles um, and not just the Jews. Peter must have been shocked to see this, that God is so righteous, even a Gentile sinner, which, which the Gentiles, they call them Gentile sinners because the Gentiles were ugly um, Jungari people to the Jews. They were full of sin, that even a Gentile sinner can be saved to the Jew first wow. and then to the Gentile, as the scriptures say. Psalms 33, 5. He loves righteousness and justice. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love 
of the Lord. God is so just and righteous. He loves it. And if faithful, if he's faithful to those two attributes, always steadfast in them, never wavering in his righteousness, never wavering in his justice. He alone is the one true just God. Nobody is, nobody meets his standard of justice. He is just. It's not that he is the standard of justice. It's not that he wants to be just or he's continuing to try to be just. No, he's just and then that's it. There's no follow-up. He is just. Psalms 50, verse 6. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Um, for instance, I'll give you this. If we find out that a murderer killed a little girl in a courtroom, we're going to demand justice. Well, he deserves hell. He deserves the, the worst of it. Um, this girl need, needs to have justice. Look, look what the Bible says, that God loves justice. justice. He is a God of justice. We're evil sinners who are depraved, and we want justice. How much more God being holy and set apart, um, that he is a God of justice. God can never be found unjust or wrong. Let's look at an example in Romans 120. This is an example of how God is just, and his justice will never be twisted. No one's going to take God's justice and turn it towards him or contradict it. He's just in his final, and that's it. Romans 1.20. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through his worksmanship. All his creation, the wonderful things that he has made, so that they who fail to believe and trust in him are without excuse and without defense. What this means is that nobody can say, uh, well, God, and no one's going to say this to God, but nobody can say, God, I don't believe in you because nobody told me about you, right? But the Bible, look, look what Romans says, creation testifies that there is a God. Creation literally testifies the trees, the clouds, the grass all testify that if there is creation, there must be a creator. Like a, a textbook doesn't exist on its own. Somebody had to create it. So God is not, God's not going to be unjust if somebody says, God, I don't know about you because nobody told me about you. But look what the Bible says, that creation testifies that there is a God, right? Um, so what this verse is saying is that no one can, can, no one can say someone went to hell because God didn't send a missionary to a faraway country to teach them the gospel because all creation meaning nature testifies that there is a god so when they reject him and are judged justly according to their own righteousness they will be found guilty and god is still just amen and to sum up how he is just he will never stop being just and how he won't use his justices for evil. God won't use how he is just for something evil. Because like all the attributes you heard earlier, they all correspond. Not one contradicts each other. So if he's just, he's faithful, he's righteous, he's love, he's also wrath. Understand? So they, they all don't contradict each other, but they work together in harmony for the glory of God. Um, so he doesn't use it for evil. Let's read Job 34.12. Truly, God will not do wrong. The Almighty, he's Almighty, will not twist justice. He won't even twist justice for the glory of God. He won't use it in the wrong meaning, which means if he is the standard of holy, and he is the standard of faithfulness, and he is, the he is knowledge, he is wisdom, he's also the standard of justness, uh, which means like a judge in a courtroom with a jury and with a criminal the God will not let the guilty go unpunished for the glory of God. So he is that standard of just. Um, so all, all glory, honor, and praise goes uh, to God. Stephanie, you want to continue? Yeah. Amen, girls. Bonnie just shared on God's justness. Now I'm going to share his attribute of righteousness. Just and righteousness go hand in hand together. So let us begin with Isaiah 45, 21. 
Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it, was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Not only is he declaring himself righteous here, but he's also declaring himself the only righteous Savior. He is also reminding us no one can compare to him. No one could be more righteous than him. He is, it's, that's it, you understand? It's as much as he could be. No one could be more righteous than he is also reminding us about his unique qualifications to perform these mighty deeds as a righteous savior. Now, in Psalms 89, 14, it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Righteousness and justice are the foundation. God so righteous, the foundation of his throne stands on his righteousness. Right. The meaning of righteousness literally means to be literally means to be right or correct especially in a moral way it means to be perfect perfectly moral nothing god does is wrong psalms 119 137 through 138 righteous are you O lord and right are your rules you have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all of your faithfulness what this is saying is that god is perfectly righteous in all his ways therefore what he does is right Guys, if God wanted to flood the earth right now, it's right because he is righteous. He doesn't Amen. do something because it's right. He does it and it is right because he is righteous. Is right. Why is his attribute so important, you may ask? Well, look at it like this. When you love somebody, you want to know them intimately and personally. Without knowing the attributes of God, you will end up creating your own God and think that God is like us. Amen. Can you love somebody if you don't know them? No, because we fall in love with people because of who they are. Their personality traits is what we fall in love with. Amen. Hold on. So basically what I'm trying to say is God's attributes are everything and his righteousness stands with that. And when we create our own God and not the God of the Bible, then your foundation is weak. Look at it like this. When you build a house, you need a foundation to structure the house. If it's not done properly, the house will crumble. So that is how a wrong view of God can affect everything. If you think that God is like us, you're wrong because he is righteous and we are not. Just because you don't like something or that he does doesn't mean it wasn't just and righteous. God has all rights to do his will because he is ultimately just and righteous. Jeremiah 9, 24. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. Amen. That I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. What this is saying, let us know him personally and understand truly, that word truly is a big word. Let us understand yes. truly who the great, almighty and all-knowing god is and let us boast in him because by his mercy and his grace we can now know him serve him and love him let us boast because he is righteous because he is righteous and just because he is righteous and just it Amen. also is saying that god is so righteous he delights in it he dwells in it you can read more about this in jeremiah psalms 145 7 Everyone will share everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness and they will sing with joy about your righteousness. This scripture is celebrating many of God's attributes. Amen. He's immorally perfect. He's righteous and full of goodness. That word everyone is us. It's talking to this audience. So let us give thanks and glory to God. Because he is full of goodness and righteousness. Guys, this is a beautiful thing. Yes, his attributes are amazing. <clears throat> but this is also scary. Bonnie, if God is so righteous, and if he's so full of goodness, how can I, a person full of sin, a disgusting, undeserving human, go before the perfect, righteous, holy God? Bonnie, how? He can't even tolerate sin. 
How Amen. do I become justified? Well, the thing is, Stephanie, that you on your own righteous will never meet the standards of God's righteousness. Let's look at Romans 3, uh, 11 to 18. Look what it says. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have altogether become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is talking about us. This is us. This, this verse is talking about. So like she said, how can we, how can we do this? How, God is so holy and righteous. How can we do this? Well, we can't. Look what the verses are saying. Ecclesiastes 7.20. Surely there is not one righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Babe, it's self-explanatory. Ephesians 2. Look what it said. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air, that means Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once were in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature, our very being, we were by nature born, by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. So Stephanie, wow. because God is so just and righteous, and we are depraved sinners. This is a problem. How are we going to fix this? How, this is a sin problem. And this is a God problem. How is this even going to be fixed? Well, the simple answer is we can fix this. At least it's not on our own doing. Amen. But Ephesians 2, 4 through 10 says, But God, being Amen. rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By Amen. grace, you have been saved and raised up and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness Amen. towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is Amen. a gift of God. It is not a result of works. So that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which Amen. God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. Now, you see where it says, For by grace you have been saved. This is talking about salvation. Amen. You can't do nothing to earn salvation. It is a gift of God. Bonnie, for, in, for instance, if it's your birthday, right? Yeah. And I buy you a present. I'm only buying it because I love you. Because you don't deserve it because it's just your birthday. Yeah. You didn't do nothing to get it just because I simply love you. I want to buy you a present. Right? I'm only Amen. buying it because I love you. Not because you deserve it. The point is, the gift to you from God, the gift to you is free from God right Amen. and for instance once again going back to the birthday thing if i buy you a present it's free to you it's a gift but I for me for, right but it costs me something obviously mm -hmm. so hold on one second okay so it costs me something to show my love for you so my point is god being rich in mercy christ had to die and resurrect for us to receive our gift of salvation so the price was Jesus Christ. So we, re we receive gain righteousness at Christ's expense. But Bonnie, it also clearly says in Ephesians 2, 8, through faith you have been saved. Amen. So now let's go to Genesis fifteen six. And he believed. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was doing the loading thing. I'm going to read that again. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Well, this is talking about Abraham. 
Abraham got credited from God with imputed righteousness because he believed and had faith. So now let's go to Titus 3, 5. He saves us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. What this is saying is it doesn't matter what you do. You don't get this. It's a gift. You Amen. didn't do nothing to earn this. It was Amen. simply because God loves us and he's rich in mercy. So I'm going to read Titus 3, 5 again. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Because God loved us and was rich in mercy for the believers, we became credit with righteousness. We don't deserve this because our sins obviously define us. So now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, Amen. so that in him we might become righteous of God. God. That scripture is amazing. It is. God acted for our sake, meaning he acted for our love. He acted he acted out of love for us to make it possible for us to know and love him. We were separated from our sins when Christ, an innocent man who never Amen. sinned, had to get punished and look guilty for our sins. Wow. Hold, Amen. Instant Lord, that God. Hold on one second. I'm yeah. sorry. And look, yes, and he had to look guilty for our sins while we, the guilty ones, were made righteous. Wow. This doesn't mean go on a sinning spree. No. Just because you're saved. Because if you feel that that's okay, like you could go on a sinning spree, well, then I would question your motives. Amen. Because when you're truly saved, God purifies your heart. And you no longer care for the desires of the world. And you can read more about this in Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Amen, girls. Amen. Um, what really really is amazing is that god uses court terms every time i teach i know everybody probably hates me because i always <laughs> teach about how god is a judge and we are the guilty and christ is our lawyer christ is basically he's more than that but god is the just judge sitting on his throne and we are the guilty standing before him and God was about to hit the gavel and say, you're guilty, you're done. Right. You know, the sand's finished, Let's get go. out. But Christ came and took our place, took our punishment. And that resulted in reconciliation right. with God. Uh, let's read Romans 3, 23 through 26. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace, so I think now, Hey, Stephanie, as a gift through the redemption, Christ redeemed us, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, verse 25, whom God put forward as a propitiation by Amen. his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. Amen. Like, like she said, he made him who knew no sin to be sin, that way we become the righteousness of God. A lot of people take that and think that Jesus was imputed with sin, and now he's sinful, and we're oh. righteous. No, God can also just justify us, but not defile his justness, not defile his righteousness. He can impute us with righteousness, and still be the standard of righteousness, never wavering in that, um, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing to think about. I want to read this verse for one second in the okay. to God. It's amazing. In the Amplified Version. It's going to take a little bit long, but I want to just show you all those words that are maybe too big for us to understand, how it breaks them down. It's a beautiful. It's, be it's beautiful. Give me one second. But this is a little bit smaller. There we go. For since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God and are being justified, which means declared free of the guilt of sin, made acceptable to God and granted us eternal, eternal life. 
as a gift by his precious undeserved grace. We don't deserve grace. Through the redemption, the payment for our sins, which is provided in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly before the eyes of the world as a living, a life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation, which means propitiation, by his blood to be received through faith. We can only receive this through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, which demands punishment for sin. Remember I said God would not let the, the guilty go unpunished? So the sin needed to be punished. It needed to, the, God's wrath needed to be taken out, which, um, which demands punishment for sin because his forbearance, his deliberate restraint, he passed over the sins previously committed before Jesus Christ's crucifixion. It was to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus Christ and rely confidently on him. So here's the, here's, here's the, the whole moral of the story. God is just, righteous, holy, loving, kind, faithful, but wrath, like uh, maybe CJ preached before. Because he's just and righteous, sin needs to be punished. He can't right? just say, okay, you're free, go, you're, you're fine. 100%, uh, because off. then you won't learn. Because then there would be no, there would be no nothing. Uh, right. He would, be, he would be an unjust God. There would be no righteousness in him. So he has to punish sin. So how does this work? See, God didn't change the way he did things because he's God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals. Yeah. as um, forgiveness for sins. See, God did the same thing, except he sacrificed his son <laughs> for our forgiveness of sin. Now, what they would do is they would touch the animal and all of their sin would go in to that animal. And they were found righteous. They were found good. Well, God does the same thing, only when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, Christ removes the sin from you. But he doesn't just leave you empty. He also imputes you with his righteousness. So that now you're justified before God. And this not only is God still just, is God still just, he's still the standard of justice, but also it's, it's glorious to his name. He's also gloried and honored amongst everyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, God justifies them so that they're now not leaning on their own righteousness, but they're leaning on the righteousness of God. Glory goes to God for that. That Christ was our propitiation. He was the, the atonement, reconciliation. We were brought with his precious blood. It wasn't something that just was here today and gone tomorrow. But no, it's such a beautiful thing to understand that this is the gospel. This is eternal life. That they may know you. You understand? This is the gospel. That we were dead, depraved sinners in front of a just, holy, righteous God. And we could do nothing. Amazing. Not that we didn't even want to do nothing. We didn't even want God. As the Bible says, we were haters of God. We were children of wrath. But God, like, like Stephanie said, but God being rich in mercy and also being just and righteous because he loved us. Yeah. He sent his holy, righteous son to die on our behalf, to take our place and justified us and imputes us with righteousness. So glory goes to God. Now, now we can go before the Lord and... We are justified before him and imputed with, with the rights of Christ. Not on the basis of works because we can never do nothing. Yeah, we can't this do not nothing. Earned. It was not, it was not. And it's undeserving it not... too. We don't deserve Amen. this. Amen. Here's the thing, you know, we can't even keep it. If, if we on ourselves are, we got saved, God did it, but we got to keep it now. We can't even keep this. Right. It's not something that we can keep, but it is God who does it. It's God who seals well, the Holy Spirit. And Amen. for the glory of God, it is God who sanctifies us, as the scripture says. For those whom he predestined, he also called. For those whom he called, he also justified once they believe in Jesus Christ. For those whom he justified, he will glorify in the name of Jesus. He glorified them. Uh, so this is, this is all good news. That God, his attributes all correspond together for the glory of God. Let us pray, Stephanie. Uh, and then we'll listen to some worship music, pray a little bit more, and then... We'll end it for God's glory. Hallelujah, Mugadam, Mugadam, Father. I pray that everybody listening tonight would understand, that under, understood this word and accepted it and it touched their hearts that you are just and you are righteous and there is no evilness in you. There is no sin in you. And this is your personality, Father. 
And not only are you the standard of these things, but you also love these things, Lord God. We know that you are faithful, Father. Your word says you are immutable. You are unchangeable, Father. So you don't stop being just. You don't stop being righteous, but you are continually those things, Lord God. I pray that this word touch somebody, Father, and that they now have a better understanding of who you are, Lord God, and who your attributes are, Father. I pray that this whole series, Father, would bless people, that it wouldn't just be something they skip through on Instagram, but they would actually listen and pay attention to your word, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would grant repentance, Lord God, heal your people, Father, and give you people the wisdom and knowledge they need to grow in your word, Lord God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.